on this episode of Counting Cars. We got a hot rod up here on the rain. Look at that motor. You can eat off of that. I hate to bug you, but is that your truck in the driveway? Yeah, it is. You trying to sell it? Did you have an appointment with me I didn't know about? I just drove 2,000 miles. You drove 2,000 miles without an appointment? Yeah, I am. Ah, uh, that's not how you remember her? No. That's rough, man. You feeling it? No, that sounds like the Firebird I know. Pow, baby! <laughs> you know what I mean? Vegas is a gambling town. Most people bet with chips. I bet with rides. Look at this. And I always go all in. Wow. What would you take for this? I'm Dan, AKA The Count. And this is my all-star team. We find them, fix them, flip them, and sometimes I keep them. This is 30 G. I can't help myself. For my crew, every job's high stakes, and we can't afford to lose. This is Counting Cars. So what you got planned for the weekend? Go down to the club. Hang out. Go down to the club. Rock and roll. Rock out, man. Enjoy myself. Look at that thing. Old Camaro convertible. It looks like it needs everything. It needs to be completely redone. Yeah. I think I need something a little more easy to do right now. I need a quick flip. Something we can get into and get out of. I want to make Scott happy on something, man. I know I've been spending a little money. Let's see, man. Anything? Nothing back there. Back there. Oh, oh, oh. What's up here on the right? We got a, we got a hot rod up here on the right. Oh, wow. We got a nice hot rod up here on the right. <laughs> That's gorgeous. It's a 1935 Ford. You can tell that? Absolutely. Wow. You never cease to amaze me. Well, you know, I try. An electric blue street rod pickup truck that's absolutely gorgeous. Probably not a good quick flip idea, but come on, man. I can't drive by this thing and just not stop. Oh, she's beautiful, man. That thing is just like show quality right there. <sighs> this is gorgeous. Look at that motor. Wow. You can eat off of that. We're wasting time just standing here. Hello? Hello? How you doing? Hey. Uh, hi. How are you? How are I'm fine. you? I hate to bug you, but is that your truck in the driveway? Yeah, it is. We're car guys. We happen to be driving down the road, and we saw this truck. I didn't know if you maybe had a minute to just talk to us. Brother, man, that truck's gorgeous. Anything to get me away from the wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Danny. Terry. Hey, Kevin. Kevin? Nice, nice to, meet to meet you, Terry. You. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. No problem. It's a 35, right? Right. Whew, she's beautiful. You were right on with that. How long have you had her? About seven, eight years. Absolutely beautiful, man. In 1935, Ford upgraded their classic pickup design from boxy to curvaceous, and the public went wild. That year, more people bought Fords than any other brand of truck. Hot rodders through the decades especially love these trucks and have driven their value up every year. In 1935, they sold for $480. Now they can be worth up to 60 grand. Terry, tell me about this engine, man. What do you got? 383-stroker. Love it. One of my favorite engines. 375 horse. Nice. I love your trick setup on it. I yeah. bet this gets up and moves. It's a rocket off the line. Can we hear her start? Yeah. You want to go for a ride or I'll, anything? Oh, I'd, I'd love to. Is that all right? Yeah, fine. Sweet. Go, man. Go, man. Go, man. Go, man. I'll right. follow you. I'd I'll follow to. you. Man, this hot rod truck is so sweet, and I'd love to take it for a ride, too. But Kevin, he's so stoked right now, I haven't got the heart to make him wait at the curb. But if he's still smiling when he gets out of that truck, just might have to try to take this thing off of Terry's hands and bring her home. This is awesome. I never get to go for rides. You don't understand. Are you ready? Let's hit it. Yeah, look at that thing. Get up and run. Big Danny in the dust. I just can't believe how nice it rides. You can drive this to work with a cup of coffee. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. That was awesome of you to take me for a ride. I feel like a little kid. <laughs> All right. You. Have Thank a you. super one. You too. Drive safe. Hey, yeah. Thank hey you. Terry, what's happening, man? Hey. This thing looks great going down the road, brother. You ever consider selling this truck? It's up for sale right now. Is it really? Yeah. What are you looking to get out of it? 38. 38? Yeah. 38. 38. You got any room? I'd come down for you. Maybe 37.5. Hey, D, let's go get something to eat, boss. <laughs> you got my phone number. I got your phone number. Come, come see me. I will. Thank you very much. Well, 
The truck was for sale, but as I suspected, Terry knows exactly what the value of this truck is, and he's not about to budge on the price for me. And frankly, I don't blame him. I think the truck's worth everything he's asking, but there's absolutely no room for me to make any profit on this. And as they say, business is business. That was awesome. It's a good looking truck. Yo! Can I help you? Yep. Who did you speak to of my staff? Uh, Devlin? Devin. Let me start over. I'm Scott. I'm Joe. Nice to meet you. I'm the manager of Counts Custom. Did you have an appointment with me I didn't know about? You guys are busy, but you got to get me in. I just drove 2,000 miles in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So wait a minute. You're telling me you drove 2,000 miles without an appointment to a hot rod shop? There I am. I'm shutting up the shop for the day. Just getting ready to get out of here. And this guy rolls up out of nowhere with no appointment. Dude, I don't care if you came from Timbuktu. I'm closing up. I got no room for you. You're not leaving this car here. Give me, give me, give me, just give me one second. Don't unload. Just stay right here. Hold on. Don't go nowhere. I got to figure this out. Yeah, I've waited my whole life to get this car done. I brought it to Towns Customs because I knew that I would get the best job done. Well, I can't take no for an answer. Joe, Joe, what happened to me He's saying, Joe, oh, hold man, on just for a take minute. a look at it. Joe, we cannot have people just show up and think they can drop their cars off. I'm to my seams. I drove I mean, 2,000 miles to Joe, get this car Joe, have a waiting here. list for people. 2,000 miles, man. Joe, you got to understand me. I cannot just have people show up. Joe, we got to let go of that handle. What's going on? How you doing? I'm Danny. I just drove 2,000 miles. He won't even look at my car. Did you? Do we have an appointment? Did we oh, set up? Oh, Joe just showed up. If you seen what I got inside this trailer here, it's right down your alley. Have you got a budget to spend on this? I got a budget from around 35 grand to 50 oh. grand that I want to spend on it. He's got a good budget to spend on it. So let's, let's, let's at least take a peek. Man. No, because I know you and this man just drove 2,000 miles, and you're going to say yes. He's going to be excited, and I'm going to be f Let's just take a peek, see what's in there. He's gone. No, he's, he's no, gone. no, let's, no let's you're going to do it let's anyway. Let's, he's gone. Let's at least look, Scott. Let's see what we got. Goodness gracious, 68 Camaro. It's ready to unload right now. I love it. When the Camaro hit the market in 1967, it was built to crush the Mustang, and it definitely gave Ford a run for their money. Chevrolet moved over 220,000 of them in their first year, quickly closing in on the Mustang sales. The Camaro was one of the 16 original Hot Wheels cars that Mattel introduced in 1968, and it's been one of the most popular toy models ever since. Tell me about the car. It's all new steel. All that's got to be done is put together. Do you have everything for it? I got all the mechanical parts. I don't have the interior or the windows, but I got everything else. Let me take, take a, look a little at peek. It. Yeah, take almost a little peek. You're thinking about doing I'm this. Just, you know, I got to look at it first. I'm just peeking. I'm just peeking, baby. I'm just peeking. Sweet. That's pretty nice right there. Just need some tender loving care. They all need tender loving care. That's a nice ride, man. You ain't gonna hear anything I'm saying, are you? Huh? <laughs> I say we do this. Awesome. Basically, all I gotta do is I gotta find a place to stash it. You're doing everything on this car. You both can kiss my ass. I'm telling you right now. And I'm not unloading that car either. <laughs> let's go. Let's get this thing done. Scott's right to be pissed. But unfortunately for Scott, I love Camaros. And uh, last time I checked, this is my shop. I think Joe's got a good budget to build this car, and it seems like a lot of work is already done to this thing. This Camaro is not going back to Michigan until she is done. Well, I don't feel like I wasted my 2,000 miles. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not at all. So what do you think? Should we keep this the way it is, or should we make this thing rumble? That's probably going to sound pretty good right now. It's got the one floor master in it. It should be fine. You about ready for lunch? <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, there's Larry. Cool. What's happening, Larry? Hey, how's it going, Danny? Good, man. How you doing, brother? Nice day out for riding. It's good it's to see you. Good to see you, too, man. About a month ago, Larry came to me with a mission. He wanted us to actually find his very first car, a 1969 Pontiac Firebird that he gave up 15 years ago. Now, all he had was a VIN number and 15 grand for us to find it, buy it, and fix it up. So I put Kevin and Big Ryan on the hunt, and they tracked this baby down. Oh, where's the rest of the car at? I was kind of expecting a whole car. Dude, you asked me to find a car from a VIN number. Well, she does need some work, that's for sure. How's 2000 sound? 
what you got to do. Yeah? Yeah. Right on. We knew it was going to need work, but we didn't know it was going to need a full restoration. And the 13 grand that's left in Larry's budget, that ain't going to cover it. So we've asked Larry to come down so he can take a look at his baby himself, and we can figure out how we're going to proceed. Oh, that's rough, man. I'm taking that's not how you left her. No. <laughs> I think I had a little more shine to it. Last time Larry saw it, it was a pretty decent car, so wasn't really sure how he was going to react. And you could just tell that he struggled on his first look at her. Had it a long time ago, a lot of memories. Can't believe somebody tore it down this much. But I definitely know it's my car. Can I recognize the anthrax sticker <laughs> on the dash, brother? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love it. Had a lot of good times in it. <laughs> if, it could, if it could talk, you'd have to shoot it? Yeah. <laughs> Probably one of the most memorable times of my life before the kids and the wife and all the other stuff <laughs> get the best of you. You know, and now I'm, my kids are grown, so. Time to have more fun in it. Yeah. When the Pontiac Firebird rolled off the line in 1967, it was almost exactly like another GM muscle car created that year, the Chevy Camaro. The Firebird had a unique chrome grill and a lower body style. Even though the Camaro saw higher sales originally, today the Firebird is worth more because fewer of them were made. In 1979, John Travolta had a custom Firebird made for himself, designed by the same man who created the Batmobile and the General Lee, Mr. George Barris. It'll be wonderful when she's done. Well, after a whole lot of work, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to be tough to stay at your budget. Yeah. There's more work here than I think any of us knew, including yourself. This right. is, you know. The good news is the frame and everything is straight. All your floor pans look really good and solid. What do you want to see as the finished product? Colors, interior, exterior. What's your vibe on this? My wife has a 2010 Camaro that's a black with the orange and black interior. OK. So I won reverse burn orange on the yeah. outside and then two-tone the interior so it semi-matches up with my wife's. Compliment, but they're inverted right. type of vibe. I'm yeah. with you. I'm with you. OK, cool. So we're going to stick with that theme. I think we can do the whole project for probably around 25. 25 is pretty steep, Rob. Yeah. But I really love the car, and you found it, you know, really means a lot to me, Danny, you know, that you went and did it, because I'm sure that was a chore in itself. I think it's, I think it's going to be worth it. Should really be gorgeous. Will. Get her done. I relate to Larry. This car is something that he loves. It's a car from his past. It's a car that he had a lot of fun in for years. So uh, it's a bittersweet moment. He's going to have to dig a little deeper in his pocket, but he will have his car back, and she will be more beautiful than ever. Glad we found her, though, man. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Kevin and I just wanted to catch you up where we're at on that 68 Camaro. Everything cool? Not really. Oh, no, no, no. Don't tell me something's not cool. Last week, Danny commissioned a job for a 1968 Chevy Camaro. This gentleman drove all the way from Michigan, just showed up at the shop without an appointment. Our garage is full right now. But guess what? Danny falls in love with the project, commissions it right on the spot, Surprise! Now we got issues with the car. Talk about a scary sight. Seeing Kevin Mack looking at parts. Well, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what the hell's going on here because the mechanics are telling me there's parts missing. I don't get it. You said he had absolutely everything. He said he had the complete car. All he wanted us to do was paint it and put it together. The problem is, you didn't give us stuff that we could rehab and use. Take a look at this trim right here. It's pretty beat down. The way he stored them, they're bent. We can't use this kind of stuff. I was under the impression when we were talking to him that night that he was building a brand new car. All the big stuff, the big dollar items, the fuel cell, motor, transmission, we've got the cool big stuff. Yeah. And he bought top-notch stuff. We don't have the knickknacks. I'm going to be set back 10 days to get all the parts in. And don't get me wrong, the customer's going to pay for this. Well, yeah, the customer has to pay for all the parts. For Pete's sake, right. he told me he had everything right. in that trailer. But I'm losing my ass on time. You are, because you're going to stagger into three other jobs. This is in the way of. How far is this going to put us behind on our time schedule? You're going to take a $6,000 hit. What? That's not just this car. It's the three other cars that this is in the way of. And yes, I can push it off the rack, but I got nowhere to push it to now because we're full. Who pays that $6,000? Can't charge the customer, it's not fair. The $6,000 is not this project. I, I, it's I understand. The other one. It's making a mess of everything else. I got that. This one was my bad. I'll take this one because Scott is the one that said, don't take it in. You got to schedule something like this out. I felt bad. I got caught up in the project, and business wise, it didn't make sense to bring it in. We're going to get hit in the back of the head on this one. 
and it's gonna hurt. You're saying 6,000 now. By the time we get done, the ripple effect is gonna be 10 plus. And you can't put this on the customer. We're gonna eat this one, and I hope you guys find a solution to this. I really do. My bad, I'll take this one. Listen, flipping and restoring cars, it's always a gamble. Joe wasn't lying to me. He thought he had all the parts, so he was missing a few things. He doesn't know that that's gonna cost my business six grand. There are so many things that can go wrong in the car game. You just have to know that they're gonna happen, and you gotta try to be ready for it. There's a little ball hit of juice on a tie right today. I didn't mean to get you yelled at, man, my bad. The guys have been working like crazy, getting Larry's 1969 Firebird back on the road and ready for him to drive it like he did back in the good old days. In the meantime, Joe's 68 Camaro is done. I love working on this car, and even though we hit a few snags along the way, we were able to stay in that $50,000 budget, and she is gorgeous, and Joe's now here to see for himself. Joe, you ready for this, man? I have been waiting a long time for this. <laughs> I'm well, excited as hell. I love it. I this love it. This is great. Are you ready to see this I'm thing? I'm ready to see it, man. Rolly, roll that baby out here, man. That sounds sexy, man. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is about. beautiful. <laughs> it's all you, Joe. Soak it in, brother. Does he come with it? <laughs> hey, for the right goal, yes. <laughs> Dude, this is beautiful. She looks great, Rolly. Thank you. You sure this is my car? It does not look like anything that I brought in. Brother, man, you know what? You're right. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> we gave this thing a wicked candied pearl paint job. Had custom rally wheels made for it. 20 inch in the back, 18 inch in the front. All new interior, custom air ride suspension on this thing, and beautiful custom hand turned silver leaf graphics on this car. It is wicked. Wow, the colors, they're just they're brilliant. They pop. Got the pearl white on the stripes. Gorgeous, man. I love those. That's pretty, isn't it? That's my man Ryan, all hand turned silver leaf. That's just nuts. Look at them headlights, man. That is Your hideaway that headlights. Is bad. We know that hideaway headlights were factory on the Rally Sport version of this car back then, but they're now electrically operated as opposed to vacuum. Oh, yeah, that means. Now they work things. perfect. This yeah. is great. Yeah, they're right on the money. You gotta, awesome. see, you gotta see under the hood. No, this I gotta thing, see man. under the hood. She's just absolutely gorgeous under here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Bam! Oh my gosh. That's a work of art, Danny. It's gorgeous. I want to hear it run. Fire this thing up, man. This is awesome. She runs like a champ. I'm excited, man. I love this car. I could not be happier. They hit it right on the number. I could not believe how beautiful it turned out. Let's do this. Whew, man, that thing looks beautiful, don't yeah, it? It does, doesn't it? And it's mine. <laughs> wow! This was a real personal project for Joe, and I was really glad to be a part of it. I mean, he started building his dream car, and we hit a wall on it, we loaded this thing up in a trailer, drove it 2,000 miles for us to finish it up. That took a lot of courage, man. For him to leave us his baby like this, I'm so glad that we got this thing done just the way he wanted. See ya. Man, that thing looks beautiful. Larry wanted us to find the first car he ever owned, a 1969 Pontiac Firebird, and we found it. Well, at least what was left of it. This thing was an absolute mess. Had to find new doors for it, new quarter panels for it, put an all brand new interior in it. Ryan did his magic on the paint, and we made sure this thing ran like the day she came off the showroom floor. Now she's finally ready to be reunited with her former owner. Yes. Well, have you had enough waiting? Are you ready to I'm see ready your car, see man? Thing, Are you ready yeah. to get back yeah. out on the road and enjoy this gorgeous 69 Firebird that's I'm been ready. yours since you were 18? Let's, Let's quit it. talking about Let's it. Let's it. see this baby. All right, here we go. Rolly, bring out that beautiful Firebird, baby. Oh, now that sounds like the Firebird I know. Ow! Baby, that's what I'm <laughs> go check it out, brother. She's all you. Take oh. your time. Soak it in. We went off, man. I love it. Came out nice. Absolutely, man. Getting this Firebird from a busted frame and a broken down engine to the badass muscle car she is right now was an intense makeover. This body needed everything. Whole new front end, new doors, new quarter panels, you name it. Now, under that brand new cow induction hood, we put a sweet new exhaust system, 
tweaked out all the mechanicals on this thing, added all new chrome to the car, a brand new interior. Ryan did an amazing, magical orange paint job complemented by the gorgeous vinyl black top on it. This thing is absolutely stunning. Ryan, what's happening, man? This is Larry. Nice to meet you. He was just complimenting your graphics, as a matter of fact. Of course, I haven't even seen it out this end yet. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what do you think? Boom! Right on the money? Yeah. My 69 Firebird came out beautiful. He did a fantastic job. It made it look like an old street rod. Just stood out like it's mean coming at you. Oh. That cleans it up. <laughs> we did some beautiful upgrades under here for you, too. We added this giant aluminum radiator. Oh, this will yeah. keep this car cool. Did a whole updated serpentine belt system up front, new carb intake, right. modern ignition system. She runs that great. That is pretty. So, Larry, you feeling it? Oh, not feeling it. I'm like, pa-pow, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think you should hop behind the wheel of this thing and go blast it down the road. Hey, thank you, Dan. Do your thing, man. Do your thing. Enjoy. This build is truly why I got into this business in the first place. I know exactly how Larry is feeling right now, because everybody's always trying to remember their youth. Some people go to plastic surgeon. Some people go get new hair. Some people get new clothes. Guys like Larry. They come to me. My pal, baby! <laughs> On this episode of Counting Cars. I think we should head up towards the speedway. There's some good cars out there. I'm with you, Ken. What a gorgeous car. Hey, brother. Hello. You see this bike up here? It's got a nice flavor to it. Let's see if you can get up next to him. What are you doing? Nice scoop. You sound like you're trying to pick him up. What, do you want a date? I cannot believe you sold this. Go on, man. Hold it right there for a second. What's the matter? I can't let this car go. We already took their $80,000. Get me out of this, man. Vegas is a gambling town. Most people bet with chips. I bet with rides. Look at this. And I always go all in. Wow. What would you take for this? I'm Dan, AKA The Count. And this is my all-star team. We find them, fix them, flip them, and sometimes I keep them. This is 30G. I can't help myself. For my crew, every job's high stakes, and we can't afford to lose. This is Counting Cars. I cannot believe you sold this. I can't believe it, man. Today, I'm saying goodbye to one of my babies. My good friends and very serious collectors, Lyle and Beverly, they actually convinced me to sell her. It's a 1932 Ford High Boy Coupe. It's something I built for myself. 80 grand. Come on, Danny. OK, you're on. I never sell cars out of my personal collection, but this couple has managed to talk me out of two this year alone. What a car. It's a 1973 Plymouth Satellite Sebring Plus. We really want this car. Come on, throw out a number. Would you go 35? 34. I love you. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I know she's going to a good home, and I know we're getting good money for her, but she's going to be tough to replace. And I don't know that I'll ever really be able to. You got about 12 inches over here off the front. Good on my side. Go on, man, hold it right there for a second. Hold it right there. Shut her down. Shut her down. What's the matter? I can't do this, man. What do you mean you can't do this? I can't let this car go, man. I can't Dude, let this car go. What are you talking go, about? Man. You cannot do this in the ninth hour. We've got paid on this already. Can't let it go, dude. A deal never should have been done in the first place on this, man. You just got to know what this thing means to me. You know, I built this car during that really rough time after my father passed away. His car had a purpose, to help me recover. But we committed ourselves to these people. Those those folks, man, they just, they're really cool, reasonable people, man. We got to talk to them. Come on, come on, let's think this out just for one second. Hold on. They want a hot rod, and I respect that. But this one is in my heart. Let me build them their car. I got one here for them right now, man. I picked up that 1925 Ford. We can build that for them, make it their car. We can paint the 25 any way they want it. Exactly. So that's actually a good selling point. Exactly. The 25 was going to be about a thirty-five dollars to $37,000 bill. Yeah. They paid 80 for this. 
Man, we'll cut, we'll cut that money back to him, man. Get me out of this, man. You're gonna have to get on the phone with him with me. I'll do whatever it takes, man. You know, I'm the last guy to back out on a deal, especially to some really great people like Lyle and Bev. I feel terrible about it, but I know in my heart, if I sold my 32 high boy, I would regret it forever. The 1925 Model T Ford that I picked up last month is a great ride, and hopefully they're gonna let me make the switch. And if they do, I will build them the most wicked tea bucket they've ever seen. Hey, Lyle, I, I am so sorry to bug you. We're getting ready to load up your car and send it to you right now, but we got a problem. Danny's having a big change of heart. He built the car at a time in his life that it's got a really super emotional connection to him, and so he, he just can't let it go. Well, all I can tell you is we had our heart set on the 32. You know, we didn't come in there and spend the day with you and negotiate a price not to get the car. Well, let me put the count on, and let's see if we can't make this right for you. Hold on one second. OK. Hey, Lyle, how you doing, brother? I'm a little bit confused as to why my I, car is I, coming here. We, we, we went to loading it up. And uh, I've got I've got some serious emotions tied up in that thing, brother. It's just it's 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 killing me. If it's a hot rod you want, man, let me build you a hot rod for you, and and please let me let me keep this one. It's just. Well, of course I'm not gonna take your baby away from you. I mean, even Solomon wouldn't cut the kid in half. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go home and explain this to Beverly now. Brother, man, let me tell you something. I will build something that is going to absolutely blow you guys away, man. I've got a 1925 Ford Roadster T-Bucket that I want to do directly for you guys that when you guys get this thing out there, people are going to freak. Well, it sounds like a good deal. We're going to be sorry not to have the 32, but uh, 25 will make up for it. I can't tell you how much this means to me. Thank you, sir. I'm so stoked that I get to keep my 32 Ford high boy. I love this car. It means the world to me. And the fact that they were so understanding about this deal, that's just going to make me go crazy in building this tea bucket for Lyle and Beverly. When they see this thing, they're going to forget about the fact that they ever wanted anything else. Rolly! What? Come get baby. Put her away. What do you mean, put it away? Put it away. She ain't going nowhere. Wake up your mind, man. It's not been a bad week, brother. We're behind on two projects, but get this. We're ahead on three. It's not been a bad week at all. It's awesome. You see this bike up here? Check out this bike. That's a nice little ride, man. That is definitely a home-built bike. It's got a nice flavor to it. Pull, pull, see if you can get up next to him. You know we got to do today, man. Pull up next to this guy. What are you doing? Nice scoop. You sound like you're trying to pick him up. What, do you want a date? No. Nice scoot. It's a shovel head. I like it. The nice thing about that is it's not done. If we bought something like that, we could finish it off. Are you really going to do this? Let's at least talk to him. Let's go. Hey, dude. Go, go up next to him. Are you really going to talk to this guy? Hey, brother. Nice scoot. Are you selling that? No. Just get done building it? Just finished it. Real nice, bro. Hey, lights go, go green. You, you sure it's not for or? sale? Oh, where's he going? Let's fall. Hey, brother. Do you got like a couple minutes to talk to you about your bike? Just a couple minutes? Yeah. Very nice. I cannot believe we're doing this. Don't scare him. I'll be cool. Hey, brother. What's up? Dude, I just want to check out your scoot, bro. My name's Kevin. Hey, I'm Keith. Keith, nice to meet you. I really like it, man. That is nice. We have a shop called Counts Customs here in Las Vegas. I'm Scott. Hey, nice to meet you, brother. Thank you. You did all this yourself, huh? It's all hand built. It's taken me about three years to get where I'm at right now. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. When you first look at this bike, it looks like a piece of junk. But after you really look at it, you know it's got some potential. I think I could probably get a good price on this bike, have the guys in the shop do a quick turnaround on it and I think we can make a profit. Man, I love your work, bro. Thanks. Shotgun exhaust, I dig it. Nice mount and everything. Hand-rolled tank, custom seat. I call yeah. that an ass killer. Yeah. <laughs> Do you mind if I sit on it? Do you want to hold the helmet so you can hit him <laughs> if he tries to get away? I will steal it. I'm yeah, too big and I'm too fat. I ain't running nowhere, so you, you, we're fine right here, you and me. Oh, check out the headlight, too. Oh, yeah. Old Trinity light. Very cool. Kevin, you actually fit that bike really well. <laughs> I tell you what, man, this is my this is my style right here. So would would you think about like selling it? 
I'm not really in the market to sell it. I don't know. It all depends on the price is right. Yeah. Would you think about selling it for eight grand? We got to do more than eight. We've got about 7,300 in it. Yeah. And then a bunch of time. Right. Well, right. time is just therapy. Yeah, there's no <laughs> value for time. That's therapy. How about 9,000? Right at the bank. We go right now. We got a deal. All right. I'm psyched about this one. For $9,000, I think I got a great score. I can already envision what the bike's going to look like. I just hope Danny's on board. Either way, I'm still going to flip it for a big profit. You grab the title, we'll meet you at the bank. Got it. <laughs> hey, I think we should head up north towards the speedway. You remember that guy that used to do our radiators? Yeah. He's out here, and he's always got stuff on his lot. Well, there's a boneyard up there, too. Oh, yeah, there's a couple of them. You know, I want to get some ink, though. I've been thinking about finishing my whole arm out. My wife's probably going to have a problem with that. You know what I mean? Uh, I know exactly what you mean. It's going to take time. Absolutely. You know, do all that. Time. I'm with you, Ken. Hey. Hey, brother. Hey. Oh. How you doing, man? Not bad. What's up? What a gorgeous car. Oh, thanks. 62? Yep. 62. DeVille. They called it the DeVille back then. I'm Danny, by the way. I'm Steve. Steve, nice to, yeah, meet, nice you. to meet you. I got a custom shop here in town. I saw you going by, and I'm like, now that's something you don't see every day. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous, man. If you got a couple minutes, I'd like to chew your ear on this car. All right, let me back up to the kid. How about right here? Awesome. Awesome. Cadillacs have been iconic symbols of American luxury and performance since they began, and the DeVille model is timeless in both style and luxury. The 62 DeVille was the most formal model with crisp lines and those trademark caddy fins. In 1974, a group of artists in Amarillo, Texas, decided to create their own unique tribute to the luxurious Cadillac, burying 10 of them face down in a cow pasture off the I-40. Cadillac Ranch, it's still there today, attracting tourists and graffiti artists from around the world. <laughs> I love it. Nothing like the old rumble of a caddy, huh? Yeah. Man, she looks good. Look at that interior, yeah. too, man. Oh, beautiful. That's about a $4,000 interior. Man, that's gorgeous. Yeah. How long did it take to do the restoration on this? Yeah, it probably took about six months. It's... Kevin, what's happening, man? Well, I didn't know how long you were going to be, so. <laughs> thank you, man. Never know with you. How yeah, you doing? Steve. Good, I'm Kevin. Good. Wow, nice. this is a pretty car. Oh, thank you. Do you mind if I do a little walk around? Sure. We... I love it. Man, I just, I love this body style. Bright work is gorgeous. It has such a factory vibe, yet it is so subtly custom. Do you mind, uh, look, if we peek under the hood? Yeah. Thanks oh. for doing this. And it's heavy. Uh. Oh, man. Beautiful with the detail open. job under the hood. Oh, I appreciate man. that. It just uh, purrs like a kitten. It really does. Close Absolutely it up. beautiful. You ain't kidding about the body work, too, man. Oh, I appreciate it. It's beautiful, man. I just got to ask. It's an addiction with me, man. Is a car like this for sale? Yeah, maybe for the right price. I'm going to throw something out here. And please, if it's insulting, I apologize. You wouldn't even consider, like, taking 20 on this. Kind of a run-of-the-mill, good condition caddy right. like this is, you know, close to that nowadays. Maybe like even mid twenties, which is like 23, 24. Probably be about 35,000. And I think that would be fair. I think this car would do really well in an auction situation. Mm -hmm. It's well, done so pay, nicely. Pay me 35, then you can take it to the auction. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. There'd be no way that I could make money on it without just absolutely cutting you off at the knees. If you ever need anything, something breaks. Oh, man, it was great to meet you guys. I mean, Steve, rock, awesome. man. Thank all you right. for taking the time, Thanks, Steve. All right. That was really Appreciate I'm sure it. you right. get this all the time driving this car. Yeah, man. I sure do, but not from guys like you that know, <laughs> know your stuff, you know? Right. Appreciate she's it. gorgeous, man. All right. Take care. Man, she's absolutely gorgeous. Well, Kevin took a page from my handbook, and he scored an unfinished bike from a guy who was riding it down the street. Now, I love it when the guys bring in projects as long as they're good ones. So I'm gonna let Kevin oversee this entire job. Hopefully, he'll find the right buyer and turn a sweet little profit. In the meantime, I'm getting together with my team so we can design this wicked 25-4 T-Bucket Roadster for two of my favorite clients, Lyle and Beverly. I need this car to be seriously sweet because I want them to forget about that 32 Ford they tried to buy from my personal collection that I just couldn't let go of. You know, I really want to brighten this thing up, man. It needs to be flashy. Everything that you see that's this maroon, burgundy, whatever you want to call it, I'd like to flip that over to, like, a candied pearl tangerine. 
<laughs> That's gonna scream. Then down on the side over here, I wanna do just insane flames on this thing. <laughs> Oh, what the hell was that? Roll red. <laughs> I want this one. That's exactly what you're going to be in 40 years. No. That's your old man, dude. Hey. hey, son, it took a lot to get this way. That's not cute, though. I'm a lovable person. And Who still says I'm... that? <laughs> Someone's lying All to the me. women. Why no, does your old man have more game than you? Hey. He's married. I'm married. There you go. I'm not. I raise my son. I work with him every day. Even though I'm the dad, He's the responsible one. He's settled down, married, and a good family man. Me, I'm single and ready to mingle. So, are you seeing it? Pearl tangerine. I like it. Lace work, pinstriping, black interior. What about the dash? Do you like the wood? I like the wood dash. Maybe I'm going to stain it darker. OK. So keep the wood grain look, but let's go real dark with it. And we're cool it. with these gauges as long as they're functional. They're great. Only thing mechanical that I want to see done on this car is turn signals. Those people are cool, and I appreciate what they did for me. That's why I want to go off on this. But you know what that means? Yeah. Next couple cars, you're going to dial it back just I a know. tad. Thank you, guys. No problem. no problem. Get it. We are working hard on this 1925 Ford T-Bucket Roadster for a couple of our very favorite customers. And we're going to make every inch of this car so bad. But today's the day that Kevin's going to try and sell a bike that he picked up about a month ago. Check out this bike. That's a nice little ride, man. He's been overseeing the whole project. Shannon did a gorgeous build. Ryan did an amazing paint job. The bike is delicious. Kevin's already got a buyer lined up. So I'm going to let him take the lead on this one and see if he can't sell this thing for a sweet little profit. You are going to love this bike. Come, Come on, Shay! Cool. Let's see it. it. does sound nice, man. It sounds like a shovel should. That's what attracted me to buying this bike. Here it comes. Yeah, nice. Got beautiful. Eddie, what do you think, my brother? Nice job on the paint. When we got this bike, it was a pretty rock-solid bike and really didn't require too much hard work to make it a complete motorcycle. Basically, we ended up resealing the entire engine on it, added tons of chrome on this bike. Ryan gave her an absolutely sick paint job, blending golds and greens and adding some chameleon in it so this thing actually changes color depending on the kind of light she's in. If you look at the other side real quick, we got some custom features on here, too. It's actually a front brake off a sports bike <laughs> on the rear. It's got the shotgun exhaust. Well, Smitty, throw a leg over, baby. Yeah. See how she fits you. Try it on. See how it feels. Yeah, that works. You look good on there, my brother. Fits like it was made for me. It does fit nice, doesn't it? The bars feel good. Yeah, well, she's pretty sweet. What's the damage? Well, honestly, I'm looking for 18 and a half. <sighs> Really more than I was looking to spend. Uh, I'll leave you 13.5 cash today. Be honest with you, we've got some skin in the game on this bike. You know, if we go over to 17, we're gonna take a little punch in the nose. And I know that's not your problem, but it, it is ours. Well, uh, she's really nice and all the extras, like you said. All right, well, 15. That's really as high as I wanna go. Work with me. Kevin and Scott, they're sticking to their number. I respect that, but I think they're going to have to dazzle Smitty just a little bit more to get him up to their asking price. Now, there is one very important feature about this bike that everybody seems to have forgotten. So I think it's time for me to step in and remind everybody what that little tidbit is. This bike is actually a numbers matching bike. This bike is titled as a 1HD Harley-Davidson bike. Really? A matching numbers Harley-Davidson is extremely valuable, especially in the custom bike world, because it makes it much easier to register, easier to insure, and definitely keeps it a higher resale value. Think about the value of that. Also being the boss, I can make some movement. I can take another nickel off. Meet me at 16 and a half, and let's call it a day. You're the right guy for this bike. All right, don't tell the wife. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say a word, brother. You know what? I'll take it. I would have loved to have sold the bike. But Danny's Danny, and Danny can sell ice to Eskimos. We have $14,000 in the bike, and we sold it for 16 and a half. That's two and a half profit. Anytime you get a profit, it's better than a loss. 
Today is a great day, but a little bit stressful at the same time. Two of my very favorite clients are here, Lyle and Beverly. They're here to buy a 1925 Ford T-Bucket Roadster that we built especially for them. I'm a little bit stressed out because originally they were buying my 32 Ford five window coupe from my personal collection, but when it came time for delivery day, I just couldn't let it go. So I got my fingers crossed that they're gonna love this tea bucket just as much. We have built something extra special and crazy. We actually redid this entire car with you guys in mind. So this is your car, and she's insane. Well, Beverly was more than a little upset about not getting the 32. Sorry. I explained it to her. She said, great. I just expect a hell of a lot out of the tea bucket. <laughs> You're good. Let me tell you, this is the most bucket that, that I've seen in a long time. Well, yeah. let's see it. Are we ready? Watch your ears. The car is almost as loud as Scott. Ah. No. <laughs> no. There we go. Come on, baby. Well, maybe it is. <laughs> oh my God. That is good looking. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. You look great, Rolly. Thank you, bro. All right, you two. Have at her. I haven't been this nervous about a car in ages. I poured my heart and soul into this 1925 T-Bucket Ford to make it right for Lyle and Bev. But if they don't love it, there's no guarantee that they're gonna buy it. And I could potentially lose two of my best loyal customers for good. Give me your first impressions. It's hot. Absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> wow. We took this 1925 Ford T-Bucket 100% apart down to every last nut and bolt and started from scratch. We painted the frame, the engine block, and the entire body a gorgeous candy tangerine. We added beautiful flames to it and variegated hand-turned leafing in all of the flames. re every inch of the suspension on this car and we topped it off with a beautiful all black leather interior. This car is absolutely sexy. There you go. A fantastic sound and a beautiful body. Great color. It had great color. I love turquoise and orange together. All right, Beverly, I gotta know, and, and, and you could tell me the truth, tell me that you are OK with this instead of the 32. Well, you know, the 32 had that alligator-looking leather inside. Right, right, right. And it had the great spider webs here. Sure, sure. I remember all that. I know you do. You got and a good memory. And I loved it. I know. I guess I like this equally as well. You do? Yeah. I really did like it, but I didn't want to let him off the hook that easy. <laughs> of course, I jerked his chain a tad. Well, let's get you in, get the paperwork. <laughs> then you'll let it. us drive it. I'm going to make sure it's all fueled up. This business is full of ups and downs and sometimes hairpin turns, but I am thrilled over the fact that they love their 1925 Ford T-Bucket Roadster. But I tell you, as much as I love Lyle and Beverly, I'm not going to let them near my showroom anytime soon. I may end up with a pile of cash, but all my babies will be missing. On this episode of Counting Cars, there's going to be a ton of work and right. a ton of money thrown at this thing right. just to get it back to even close to what it used to be. I can't stand the signs outside. The Count's signs. Custom signs on the building? You yeah. don't like them. What do you got? Like I said, these are just options. Bam! Shannon, my man, come on, bring out that chop! Holy s***. <laughs> that is amazing. Bring out that gorgeous charger, brother. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, baby, oh, she's beautiful. Lord. This is Counting Cars. Please be nice to me. Be nice to me. 68 to 69 charges, it's the same thing every single time. Something, if not everything, has to be repainted. What's up, boss? What's going on? You did this, didn't you? <laughs> Bro. This is you. Bro, <laughs> tell me you got no complaints so far. Well, the car's great. It's still, it's, good. it's a still, it's 68 charger. I know, 68 I know. 69, we, I know. we just 
Just, you know? It's your curse. Ryan hates 68 Chargers. And Ryan loves 68 Chargers. It's really complicated, man. I love the car. I know. I just don't want to work on it. I know. He's had some rough times with these cars in the past. I'm just hoping that this one turns out great for him. But this is a really nice one. It's an exceptionally nice this is car. This is a really exceptionally nice car. I agree. 68 Chargers. In 1967, Dodge was looking to square up with the super popular Ford Mustang, and in doing so, they introduced another icon into the American muscle car history. Packed with a stock 318 cubic inch V8 engine rated at 230 horsepower, the 68 not only held her ground with the Mustang style-wise, but on the track as well. The 68 Charger was a runaway success for Dodge, selling 96,000 units that year. The Charger quickly went from popular purchase to American icon, starring alongside Steve McQueen and Bullet and featured in numerous movies and TV shows. This is actually part one of his and hers Mopars. This is part one. This is part one. This is the his half. Now, this is a car that we found for him. He did not have a car to start with. That's why it's so nice. That's why it's so nice. <laughs> this car was in a family for years and years and years. The taillights, they're not even rotted out. Those are the first things to go on these. Look at this, look at this, how straight everything is and solid everything is. These quarters are solid. These doors are solid. The rockers are solid. The trim is all here. The console is beautiful. And to me, the car is twice as nice as other buildable cars. And it's gonna be a really cool build because on top of it all, he kind of wants to go resto mod, but in an old school sort of way. He wants it to look like the cool car that you would have gotten back in the day. Even that being said, there's gonna be a ton of work and a right. ton of money thrown at this thing right. just to get it back to even close to what it used to be. This is now going into uh, your hands first, Adam, for disassemble. I mean, we get to skip mechanics this time because there's no motor, no transmission. That kind of benefited us, and that was part of the reason we got a deal because it had no drivetrains. Yeah, but here we go, man. Gonna be a gorgeous 68 Charger. It's had a lot of love all of its life, and it's time to continue that love. Thank you, gentlemen. Cool. Thank you. In your hands. You know, there's something about Chargers, man. These cars are challenging. They're challenging for all of us, but especially for Ryan. I know that this charge is going to be stunning in the end, but the question becomes, is this the charge that's finally going to win over Ryan, or is this the one that finally makes him say, I'm done with Chargers? We'll be all right. All right. We always make it happen. Back to work. <laughs> Right, you in here? Oh, there you, you are. Oh, we got guests. <laughs> How you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm Ryan. Hi, John. John? Jason. Shannon told me he's got some folks coming in today with a motorcycle restoration. Now, for me, that either means we're making an old bike look like it's brand new off the showroom floor, or we're restoring an old school custom badass chopper. Me personally, I hope it's an old school chopper. Yeah, they got a cool project. I'm gonna really? let John tell you all about this thing. What do we got? We got a 59 pan chop, came to Pennsylvania from California in roughly 73. Really? Like, are we restoring it or are we redoing the bike ground up, starting fresh and doing something different? Or are we doing well, like a restoration? We're gonna do ground up restoration, but it's gonna be a 100% restore. Motor needs going through, tranny should be going through, paint, chrome's all gonna need redone. The bike was my dad's, signed it over to me for my 16th birthday. And I rode it on and off before and after I got my driver's license. Oh, right. yes, uh, yes, same here. Oh, yeah. Last time the bike was run was probably 15 years ago. I got some pictures here of me when I was, uh, I guess I'd have probably been about 14 on the bike in these pictures. And uh, wow, cool. man. There's been a lot of yelling at me to stay away from that bike, Junior. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I used to climb on it. That is insane. The sissy bar, the queen, king and queen seat, the gas tank, the front end. So uh, what condition is the bike in now? It does, does it still look like this? It's still together. All right, well, that's a start. <laughs> hey, man, it's, it's better than bringing us a frame and a motor and say, this yeah. is what it used to look like. Yeah, I mean, you put a throttle cable on it, a set of plugs and some gas, you know, get your leg built up, you can probably fire it up. <laughs> 59 pan, ain't got no push button. Does it still have the original paint job on it? Yes, it does. So it still has the original paint job. Yep. We're wanting to replicate that paint job. There's enough left of it to 
get you started. <laughs> if it's got enough for me to start with, that's a huge difference than what I'm used to. The fact that it's still original, this is what we would consider a survivor. I appreciate this kind of job coming because uh, it's not every day that we get bikes that are intact. Like, yeah, and and <laughs> and remake to what their you know original glory is. I remember this bike being in pristine condition, and that's where I want to see it again. Perfect. You have a time frame that you think? I don't have about? a time frame. Good things take time. You got it as long as you need it. Very cool. Sweet. Well, I'm going to take them over to the office. And All right. Oh, well, yeah. Guys. So well, nice to see you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Let's head back out. Some restorations are just going through the motion and making old look new, but this 59 pan is an absolute treasure. I'm so happy they decided to bring it here because she's going to be gorgeous when we're done. <laughs> this could be cool. Hold your horses. Go back to your fake sanding. What is going on? Fuckers in there. Black chair. Watch that console. That's limited edition. We're losing the top two. Hey, as long as the roof skin's good, I'm I'm fine with that. All right, yeah. All right, later, Danny. Danny just called with some good news from the '68 Charger client. He's picked the color, which I love, and really nothing else too crazy except what he wants to do to the vinyl top. I'm gonna get with Bob and Adam and see how much of a headache that's gonna be. What's the plan? Black cherry. Seriously? <laughs> Why does everyone pick black cherry? Dude, for 20 years, 20 years at Counts Customs, the best-selling color has always been, hands down across the board, black, black cherry. cherry. Black cherry looks the best, man. Look at this car. And this body, with all these sharp-ass body lines, and when we're done with it in the body shop, black cherry? Oh, goodness. All right. The only bad news, or potential bad news, that I got from Danny is this, vinyl top goes. Never have we ever peeled the vinyl top and didn't have to do whole roof skin or patch up the no. rust holes. I got faith, dude. This one's yeah. solid. Solidest uh, car we've ever had. You be the positive, I'll be the negative. That way I'm not surprised and I don't hate okay. life. So what's next? Rip it apart. Man, you know I like to cut tops. Top away. <laughs> Look, you want a blow torch? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, oh, I can't even watch that. Is it rusty? Is it rusty? What's next? Rip it apart. Man, you know I like to cut tops. Top away. <laughs> Look, you want a blow torch? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, oh, I can't even watch that. I have horrible luck with these old chargers, and there's no way that it's not going to be a Swiss cheese rust sandwich underneath that vinyl top. Is it rusty? Is it rusty? Look at that. Oh. That is wash primer and glue. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's like brand new metal right underneath. I there. told you, you gotta have faith. Man, you ain't even gotta do nothing but hit this with thinner. All the way to the molding. This is the winning lottery ticket right here. I would say 99.9% .9 of the time when you remove a vinyl top off an old car, you're gonna find rust. That's just the way it is. So to find absolutely no rust, that's a huge win for us, especially when it comes to replacing the sheet metal around the windshield. I told you, super clean. No rust, man. Sweetness. That's the factory e-coat. <laughs> this is a lottery body right here. Well, that was a very pleasant and rust-free surprise. Maybe, just maybe, this is the charger that changes the way I feel about these things, but we're still a long way from the done column. My fingers are staying crossed. All right. I really love this car now. I told you, you got to have faith, man. Shan, my man, working on the pan. What's happening, uh -huh. brother? How What's are you? What's going on, man? You tell me it's nice to see this back on the rack. Yeah. I can't stop rhyming. You know, we get a lot of classic cars here at Counts Customs, but sometimes we get classic bikes. And I hear that right now I got a 59 Panhead in-house. I have not met her yet. I'm going to go check this baby out, get the lowdown from Shannon. Same good, brother. good. Same How's here. How's things Same going here. with this baby? It's getting there. They're 59, moving. right? Yes. Man, 59 Pan, good Lord Almighty. I mean, what a cool bike, though. Definitely. I'm not changing much as far as how the bike looked and right. functioned at the time. Right. But we're redoing the motor, the transmission. 
I did put a new fender and a new gas tank. Right. I'm changing the exhaust that was on it, the, the frame. There's a lot of funky stuff going on. It's got issues. Yeah, she's cracked at the, the base of this, this backbone, the tube. Eesh. You can see it yeah. within the... Good Lord, I've seen a whole bunch yeah. of creative welding up in here. Man, I, I'm telling you, I look at all of this stuff, and it just makes me nervous. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. like, you know, you hit the wrong bump going down the road, and your frames can just break, it looks like. But that's why they call them choppers back in the day, right? They just chop the heck out of them. Cut it up in your garage, turn it into what you want to turn it into. Yeah, I mean, the headlights were mounted to the front spring. How do you do that without having your headlights bounce all down the you road? You had a freak show literally in front of you while riding at night, you know? Hey, man, that's that's 70s creative. That, that was choppering, man. Right, <laughs> right. But you're keeping the integrity of the visuals of this, yeah. but you're going to make it safe and straight. Yes. Yeah. What's the scoop on the cat who owns this bike? John, who's the owner of it now, his dad owned the bike, uh -huh. and his dad passed. It's John's bike now. Oh, yeah. And he has the time and the budget for us to give him back what he what he was been riding in since he was 16 years it's old. It's a family heirloom. Yes, yes. Uh, it's a family heirloom, and it was his dad's, and now it's his. I understand oh, this yeah. guy, John. I, I get it. Uh -huh. I get it. She may not look like much now, but in Shannon's hands, come on, brother. This thing's going to look like it came out of a time machine with a few upgrades and some goodies. I cannot wait to see Shannon get this bike done. I love it. This is going to be one of the coolest pieces come out in a long time, man. Oh, I yeah. dig it. Wow, it's cool. beautiful. How come every time we come to Boulder City, it seems like we're in a whole different world, even though it's only like 10 miles away? The 68 Charger has been completely taken apart, and now's the time for the whole shop to come to a screeching halt while we wait nervously for the next two weeks with the car being off-site getting sandblasted. There's a new place that we just heard about, so Bob and I are going to go check out their setup, but more importantly, how fast they can get this job done. Man, this is crazy that this is this, is this guy's operation out here. Look, look at all the stuff he's got. Whew, there's a lot. Building number eight. Ah, oh, see, here we go. That whole Kwanzaa hut is the blasting bay. Correct. You can sandblast an airplane in that day. Check out the Kwanzaa hut. Yeah. Shoot like riding in your van. Eric, you How there? you doing? I'm Eric. Bob, nice to meet you. I'm Bree. Bree, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you. pleasure. So we've got a 68 Charger. We need to get media blasted and epoxy powder coat inside and out. Sounds good. Yeah. Should we, should we take a look? Yes, yeah. please. Yes, please. I think we got it around back. Look at all these big things out here. Those are huge gears. Look at all this stuff, all this cool stuff. Man, that is a cool truck. Uh, how long have you guys been here? I can't believe we found you guys here in town. We've been here in this facility for about three years. About how long we've been looking. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Finding you guys here locally, got it, got yeah. it. You're, you're you. going to see a lot of us. Yes. This is, this is what we do, so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know how it works. Break it down for me, how, how all this is going to work and, and what we're getting out of the, the epoxy powder coat, as opposed to us just spraying it. First, we'll sandblast it. We'll use plastic media. We'll use type 2 urea. Oh, and, awesome, uh, okay. The type two urea doesn't build heat, so it'll take everything out of there, but it won't warp your pan. It's not gonna beat it up. It's not gonna make more damage. Yeah, it won't, doesn't, it doesn't really etch it. it. It just removes any of the dirt or other coatings that are on there. It'll take all that off. The powder coat is an epoxy-based powder, so it gives a really good bite into the material. Okay. And has really good adhesion properties. And, and uh, corrosion resistance absolutely. more than anything. Well, I have the most important question for Bree. Fire She's away. in charge, I know that. All right, fire away. <laughs> How long is this gonna take till we get the car back? Our usual turnaround is two to three days. Blasted and powder coated. Should be. Like done? <laughs> three days? <laughs> All right, thank you very much. It's two to three days? Yep, we'll give you a call when it's done. That is incredible. Man. I can't Absolutely. wait for Appreciate this. Appreciate it. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. I'll see you in three days, right? We'll see you. Very Perfect. excited about this, man. Cool. Three days? Man, it normally takes us weeks to get a car into sandblasting. That's more time we just shaved off the schedule, which is going to make Danny happy. Time is money, which makes Kevin happy. And with that extra time, that makes us happy. 
That's a win, a win, and another win. Three days. Man, we're gonna be using these people a lot. Yeah. For sure. For sure. All right, let's go back to work. Yo. What's up, Ryan? What are you up to? Making greatness happen. <laughs> I'm up to making, you know what? You ever go out front of the shop? I mean, you're always stuck in Obviously. the shop. Obviously. But do you really pay attention to the front of the shop? We got old, old, there's no other way to say it, ass signs. The old signs, they've been there for like 20 some odd years. Yeah, they're, they're kind of sad. So I decided to not ask anybody and just start making a new sign. So that's the design you came up with? This is going to be the design that I'm actually going to do on it. Do that badass. I mean, this right here will be multi layered. So each Get layer. Get out of here, really? So be... everything's just stacked up and stacked up yeah. so it looks. But, but from afar, the cross will still look completely flat. But then as you, you know, get close to it, you'll start seeing all the shadows and stuff like that. I mean, that's gonna be badass, look at that. So, I mean, we're talking about a whole lot of signs, a couple for the doors around here, maybe the front door, maybe a new cross for the gate. As big as this is gonna be, what kind of material are you using? My thoughts on it, it's gotta be aluminum. You're buying all that expensive ass aluminum. Whoa! <laughs> Nobody said I was buying anything. Remember, this isn't for me. I get this that. This is for the shop. Dude, this could cost $10,000. It's gonna it cost 10 grand. Wrong. I mean, yes, I realize it's gonna cost a little bit, but we're not talking thousands. It's like getting Danny a birthday present and saying, here, you just bought yourself something. All, all, the, all the work's done. All I gotta do is put it on the machine. Is, look, you know what? Is there any way you can cut this out smaller scale out of steel? It doesn't cost a lot of money. So you do. So pay. that we can present this to Danny and let him decide how much he wants to pay and all that good stuff. For some reason, people don't trust me around here. I don't really know what their problem is. Anyways, Ryan wants me to make little versions of the big ass signs we're gonna make for the shop. Fine, I'll make the baddest little signs he's ever seen. He's gonna love them. Danny is gonna love them. You can trust me on that. It's only gonna make the shop look better is all you need to worry about. Right, right. It's all you need to worry about. Don't Ooh. worry about the bill. I got the samples of the street sign and the building sign. These are the smaller versions, These right? are the smaller versions. And note, I didn't do the main sign because you don't realize that that is like a 15-piece sign. <laughs> But this right. will still give us right. the main idea. I get it. Mike had an idea to make new Count's custom signs to replace the old ones we have hanging up outside. Now, as far as Mike ideas go, actually wasn't bad. I, I liked it. I did ask him to make scaled down versions so that we can show Danny what he's agreeing to. I'm going to go check on Mike to see how that's working. All right, so this is going to be a street sign out there. Oh, check it out. All the holes are all pre-cut, pre ready to rock and roll. You can just put a screw through the whole thing. Something like that. <laughs> you know, but of course, I mean, this could be red, this could be black, that could be black, that could be red. Right, right, right. You know, right. either way. Dude. But look at how sexy that is for a street sign. I like that. Look at that. That is badass. Check this one out. Check this one out. Hold on. This one is replace the building sign. And of course, we already have wood up there, so right. we're just attaching this to that wood. So we'll paint this that This goes black. on the front of the building. Yeah. This is this is like a secret squirrel kind of just tag on the building. Oh, we got that one up there. It's got that horrible looking cross. Dude, this is just replacement. It's wood, it's falling down, it's cracked and chipped and it looks horrible. Oh. No, no, this is a four foot round when it's full size. That's right, four right, foot, right. so yeah. this is like four and a half feet. Dude, I like that. I like how it overlaps everything. It like goes bigger than the circle. Come on, how sexy is that? It's got its own pinstripe, a little bit of bold action, give it that industrial look. The thing about Mike, when you tell him to do something, it's probably not gonna come out the way you expected it to, and you're definitely gonna hear a lot of whining about it. But when he gets self-motivated, Mike can really pull off some magic. I'm hoping Danny likes these signs as much as I do, but Danny could be tough. 
he sees things that the rest of us aren't gonna see. So at this point, my fingers are crossed. You know this is gonna be really expensive, right? I love you, bro. It's gonna be badass. Oh. Super this is it. This is, this is how they awesome look. What's going on? 68 Charger. Bam! We tried out a new sandblasting company here in Las Vegas. And so far, so good. The Charger was done on time, and she's gorgeous. Now's the moment of truth. We're going to show her to Danny. Either he likes the job or he hates the job. The whole shop comes to a grinding halt, and I get an earful from the boss. So this is the first time that we've powder coated a bare metal car. It's powder coat primer. Yeah, inside and out. Inside and out. And I think we need to do this on every single car. We went down to the guy's place. Yeah. They media blasted everything. The steel looked brand new. This thing will float in the ocean. I mean, it's <laughs> epoxy powder coated. Right. On the bottom and the whole car. Epoxy carbon Kevlar bed liner. The bottom of this thing is all but bulletproof. Brain is one thing, but powder coating is another. It's electrostatic. Right. So it goes everywhere, inside and out. Yeah. yeah. Solid for life. It's yeah. beautiful. I'm loving it. Yeah. yeah. I'm loving it. The body is gorgeous. The pinch wells are gorgeous. The floor is gorgeous. The frame is gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, my lord. So there's more up front. How fast can we be moving here? This was only one day. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, dude. So you have made huge progress. So we got the modern Mopar yeah. Hemi in this, the 392. Yeah, 392. Yep. A 392. Five speed. Brand new Hemi with the five speed automatic behind it. Yep. So the newer ones technically have the eight speed, but this guy said he wanted to feel the old school, like, huh? So we feel said, the bank. He wanted to feel the bank. So we said, well, go with the five speed because you still get the kick. Because the eight speeds are so smooth, you just don't feel them go. They just go, go, go. All right, I got you. This is stunning. So, OK, what's your next step, Adam? We're going to do all the wiring and fuel lines and brake lines tomorrow. OK. Put the steering column in, bleed the brakes, and fire it up. So we'll actually be able to put the rollers and drive it to the body shop. The body shop's getting a running car. The paint shop is then getting a running car. No more pushing cars. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Cool. Great job. Adam. Thank you, sir. Great job. Ryan. Get excited. Well, if I keep getting lucky with this Charger build, I might just stop being so tender-footed with these things. First, a rust-free roof. Now the boss approves of the sandblaster that we just rolled the dice on. So far, so good. But as corny as this sounds, lucky streaks never last in Las Vegas. Great job, gents. This Alrighty. was a good visit. Man, this is beautiful. You got that right. Man, that's cool. No chip, no that's dents, not no things, nothing. I love 70s chops, and when I found out we had a 59 Panhead HD chopper in my shop, I got pumped. She was in rough shape, man, but Shannon, he went back in time and brought this chopper into modern day. You know, the frame had some structural issues, and of course, that 59 Panhead needed a whole lot of love, but Shannon went crazy on this thing, fixed everything on it while keeping the integrity of a long, old-school 70s chop. John and his wife, Lori, are here today to check out this beautiful panhead. Now, I love the bike, but the most important opinion is that of the man who's going to be riding this baby. I got all the confidence in the world. John's going to be loving this bike. John, how you doing? I'm good, man. Good to how see you? you, bro. Good to see you. Lori, how, how you are doing? you? How are you? I want to talk to you two about this motorcycle here for a minute. Now, this was this was your dad's bike. So oh, how, yeah. how old were you when it might, when you saw it? I had to put me like five. Oh, my Lord. So this yeah. thing's been with you forever. Lifelong. I, love it. I yeah. love it. And you wrote it then uh, later in life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on my 16th birthday, my dad signed it over to me. You know, I, I rode the bike on and off for six, eight years. I know you wanted us to do our best to pay respect to the way your father had the bike. And uh, that was a challenge. But what was really cool was the fact that the bike was so 70s correct that we loved every minute of it. I think you're going to be stoked. Have I rambled on enough? Are you guys ready to see this, baby? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Now, it's been how many years since it was running? 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Come on <laughs> up. Come on up. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna love it. Nothing sounds like a perfect panhead. Let's just hang out right here. Shannon's going to bring this baby out. I'm ready. This thing is sick. Shannon, my man, come on. Bring out that chop. Oh, That's a familiar sound. Bro, 
Brother, make yourself at home. <laughs> wow! <laughs> when it comes to old school choppers, there's something special about an HD pan head, and this gorgeous 59 is no exception. John wanted her rebuilt just the way she looked back in the day, and that's exactly what my main man Shannon was born to do. He went over every square inch of this bike from front to back, fixing all of those old welds and repairing them the right way. We overhauled that beautiful pan head engine, added a new clutch plate, a new gas tank, new lights, a super comfy king and queen seat, and some wicked pipes. Completing out this old school look is Ryan's paint shop. He stayed true to the style of the era with tons of metal flake and finger fan paint techniques, just like they did back in the day. This bike looks like it could have jumped straight off the cover of one of those chopper magazines from the 70s. Man, it's killer. You guys know Shannon? How are you? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, guys. How you How doing? How are you? What are some of the things that just jumping out at you? I mean, uh, just the shading, <laughs> you know, the like around your fingertips. It was literally called finger fades, and that's that's my index right there. Yeah, so. there you go. <laughs> Did we capture the old vibe that the bike had in a brand new way? Absolutely. Okay. You feeling good about it? Absolutely. It's just it's just like a new version. Shannon, explain a little bit about what this bike was like working on from a mechanical aspect. Beautiful the way she sat. There were some things that, you know, people do in the 60s, 70s that needed to be addressed, and the frame was one. But this this is the era. That's what they did to bikes. They cut the back off. They cut the front off. They raked it. They stretched it. They put crazy Springer front ends on it. This is an iconic chopper. Mechanically, I mean, the, the engine's fresh. It's got a new clutch system in here uh, with an extra plate, so it'll start easier. New wheels, front and rear. The front end, which is your existing front end, just re chrome The gas tank, all redone. Let me ask Ryan now, tell us about the paint, how that was. The colors are the biggest difference. The, the lacquers that they had back in the day, if you put on 10 coats of lacquer candy, it would eventually get to be almost black. With today's candies, five, six, seven coats, you can put on 20 coats, and it still stays that same bright, vibrant color, so it, it doesn't get so milky and muddy like the old lacquers. Right. And that's the biggest difference in this paint job is the clarity and how bright it is. So uh, let me ask both of you, how you feel? Stamp of approval? Everything cool? Oh, my, Digging yes. It? 100%. Definitely yeah, wow. Absolutely. I think you, should, you, you both should try it on. I'd like to see you guys on it. What do you think? There we go. Yeah, watch, watch the pipes. Don't burn yourself. Yeah, I will help you. Yeah, yep, don't, and don't catch your leg on that. There you go. Yep. Pop up. Oh, yeah. Is that <laughs> right, a little better? See? Oh, that is a little better, I better. think. Now, see? <laughs> now it looks even more correct. This is the picture yeah. right here. Yeah. yeah. That's what we've been waiting for. Feels good, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. It does. Amen. I love it. Would your dad be happy, sir? Absolutely. Amen. Not only is the bike extremely cool and era correct in the whole bit, but the fact that it's been in the family forever, that just makes it all the cooler. So thank you so much for trusting us with such an amazing project. Thank you. We really, honestly, we appreciate it. <laughs> well, let's go to the office. Let's wrap things up. If you guys, Shannon, you want to get her ready, oh, yeah. to, ready to ship. I am so glad that John and Lori love this bike as much as I do. But you got to understand, man, this bike was John's dad's bike. Now it's John's bike, and soon it's going to be John's son's bike. That's what we do here at Counts Customs, man, tradition. And I'm so blessed that my team gets that. This bike is gorgeous, but it's so much bigger than that. I couldn't be more proud. The cover of an old chopper magazine. Yeah. I'm not going in there. <laughs> <laughs> what are you working on, man? All right, so let me, let me scoot it over here a little. Right, I don't so want you to get so too, you know, it's, it's not real hard to see through. I had an amazing idea to redo the Count's Custom signs outside of the shop. From like 100 years ago, like, like the 90s. So I redesigned them on my computer. I made scaled down versions of them on the plasma cutter, and they are Badass! Historically, when I've uh, taken it upon myself to do things that I thought Danny would appreciate, he has not. So what you're telling me is, no, I'm 10 grand into a helmet <laughs> for you. So I'm trying again.
I hope he likes these signs or I'm out a bunch of time and money. Okay. So, I can't stand the signs outside. And whoa, we... Whoa, 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 what, are, what are you talking about? I mean, they... My signs? <sighs> the Count's signs. Custom signs on the building? Yeah. You yeah. don't like them? Uh, those are my signs. Well, I really... I love those signs. Those are, those are the signs I've had on the building for 100 years. They may be 100 years old. They might have been up there forever, but they look that way. They look bad. They're faded. <laughs> Regardless, what do you got? Anyway, all right, so, like I said, these are just options. For the just, building? For the building. Okay. And the street signs. Bam! They're steel, not cardboard, signboard, plywood, nothing. Steel. These are just to see if you like them so that we can actually scale them up. This is actually gonna be a four foot circle. So this is gonna be a huge piece. These are five foot by four foot. I've got a couple different designs, but I wanted to get your, I wanted to pick your brain first. Bro, I'm, 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 first off, I'm highly impressed. This is awesome and I love the way it pops. The colors, bam. And, and if you say this is gonna be huge, that's gorgeous. You could read this from across the parking lot. And that's, that's what I'm going for. I, I want you to be able to see it from afar and read it and know what it says immediately. I love it. Bottom line, I love what you're doing. Let me nice. just say that. So what I would like for you to do is maybe incorporate how well this pops and is legible from a distance into this. The concept is phenomenal. We just got to make it pop. The material for the signs, I believe, is about 1800 to grand. Okay. That's just the metal. Okay. Um, I'm already doing all the designs, so it's not gonna cost you anything. <laughs> you have no idea how much that actually costs me. <laughs> okay, so I got I got about 2200 bucks of material. I got about $350,000 in Mike's time. <laughs> I love the whole concept. So you're right on the money. Thank you. Thank you. Dude, whatever you're doing, keep him on that track. You know, very few things scare me anymore, but when Mike says he's got something to show me, <laughs> I feel gray hairs coming in, and I feel my life getting a little bit shorter. But I gotta say, I'm impressed. I mean, Horny Mike's got this track record of making some questionable choices, but the fact that he came up with this, something positive for the shop on his own, gotta say, I'm a little bit impressed. I think these signs are gonna be beautiful. Bro, run with it, give me some real numbers, let me know what I'm looking at. Thank you, thank you. Wow. A while back, a customer came to us wanting a 1968 Dodge Charger. So we went out and we found him the 68 Dodge Charger. But I gotta tell you, man, 68 Chargers have been a challenge around this shop for quite some time. But with a little bit of luck and some help from some new friends, we found an absolutely gorgeous example. And I know we're gonna turn this baby into a world-class beauty. We did a complete frame-off restoration on this charger and upgraded everything from suspension to brakes to engine to trans to air. It's got it all. This thing is gorgeous inside and out. Now, Mike, who owns the car but hasn't seen it yet, he's here with his wife, Dixie. We're going to blow their minds. Mike, Dixie, how you two doing? Doing great. Good. I got a few questions for you. What's that? Behind that door is something insane. It is a 1968 Dodge Charger. And, uh, and it belongs to you. I'm curious as to why does Mike and Dixie want a 68 Dodge Charger? A family friend, we grew up together. And Vic left for Vietnam in 66. God bless him. And he, he said, Mike, when I get back, I want to buy me a Charger. Got it. At the time, I didn't even know what a Charger was. And when he came back, he's pulling in my driveway with this yellow 68 Charger nice. rumbling away. And yeah. I went, oh my God, I want one of those. Yeah. And I have wanted one ever since. You wanted not only a 68 Dodge Charger, but you wanted one that was highly updated while paying respect to the original car. Yep. This car has it all. Not only does it have it all, but the appearance is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> I have wanted this car for over 50 years. You know, I'm gonna wait right here because I want it to come out in the sun. Okay. All right, Ryan, my man. Whew. Bring out that gorgeous Charger, brother. Oh my God! Beautiful. Look at that. Look at her. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh my Beautiful. lord. 
Mike wanted a Charger that looked like 1968 but drove like 2020. And man, I tell you, we delivered the goods. She's got a brand new 392 V8 Hemi engine backed up with a five-speed automatic transmission to make those long distance drivings a breeze. We added new top of the line brakes and suspension so she looks like a dream and even handles better. Ghetto Bob went off on the interior, did an incredible job customizing everything from the one of a kind dash to new seats that accommodate Mike's size. But this car wouldn't be complete without Ryan's paint job and boy did he nail it. This black cherry just beams in the sun while still highlighting her long sexy lines. Man, this car came out so nice that it even changed the way Ryan feels about Chargers. Y'all know Ryan, Ryan is Mike and Dixie. Thank you so much, she's beautiful. <laughs> Oh, baby, look. What's the MR, brother? It says it's dad was Mike Rhodes, his mm -hmm. mom was Maxine Rhodes, mm -hmm. and he is Mike Rhodes. This is the rare MR edition. Yes. That's from your girl right there, Mike. That's from Dix. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Blimey. Thank you so much. Oh, that is amazing. You won't, you won't see another one like this one, brother. No. I, it's just uh, it's one of a kind. She is just drop dead gorgeous. <laughs> I just can't get over it. How you all feeling so far? Beautiful, this is beautiful. To actually see this in person, Unreal. I didn't think it was really this possible. <laughs> it gets better, it gets better. <laughs> Look at that. All custom everything. Everything. Gosh. Console is custom made, all of the custom touches in the dash, all your custom gauges, your tilt steering column on it, your custom shifter, the seats are custom. Pull up a chair. Please do. Pull up a chair. Uh, that seat, it goes way back if you want. <laughs> oh yeah. How does that feel? This is amazing. Feels great, doesn't it? The seat is comfortable as heck. <laughs> I'd say something else, but I'm trying to behave myself. <laughs> but we utilized all of the spaces on the dash, you know, in, in, in factory areas, but just updated everything. Let's look at the truck. Come around the back. You're going to dig this. You're going to dig this. Oh, my. Trunk, oh my just, just like the interior of the car, everything is all custom panels, all wrapped in the leather, and just has a nice flavor to it. Ryan, let's talk about this paint a little bit. Gladly. The MR. We call those watermarks. Mm -hmm. So when you first wash the car, they disappear. Don't freak out. You're not washing it off. They come back when it dries. Okay. <laughs> when we first started talking, you wanted a black car. That's when we started talking about the black cherry and sold you some samples, and you guys were sold right then and there. Yes. Oh, yeah. Tell me you don't regret that choice. Oh, hell no. Oh, this, <laughs> is the this is beautiful. So good. Exactly. <laughs> this is actually better than the samples that we were looking at. This is a little bit of uh, a more of a custom mix of the, the black cherry. All the high body lines that stick out, those have been highlighted lighter, so they're brighter in the sun. Uh, there's actually fades all over this car. Uh -huh. In this cove and in here, it's faded darker. Walk around the side. It's darker here. This body line is highlighted. The whole bottom of the car has a black fade, so it kind of pushes the bottom of the belly of the car in further. And my favorite part of the car is even right here in the fenders, I concentrated the silver pearl and really brought that out, so you got a really rich candy red here. It works really, really well. Speaking of working really well, you wanted modern, everyday, turn the key drive, but you wanted lots of power? Yes. Brother, enjoy. There she is. You got it. Oh. Oh, there's your all Look brand new 392 Hemi. Holy crap. Backed up with that five speed automatic. Oh, uh, and your Resto Mod AC. Got your all aluminum radiator, the tube headers, the whole bit on this thing. What about this car has really got your attention? The first thing I saw was the nose, and then the red just blew me away. It's the stance on this thing is crazy. Amen. <laughs> it looks wicked. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I can't pick one thing. It, the whole car yeah. Yeah. is exactly what I wanted. That's what we want, is that smile. That smile says everything. <laughs> <laughs> job well done, stamp of oh, approval. Yes. God. Oh, yes. This is a thousand percent. Amen. Ryan, my brother. Yeah? Do you mind putting her back in there, and let's get this baby ready for shipping. Well, to say that Mike and Dixie are happy, 
That's the understatement of the century, man. This 68 Charger is absolutely gorgeous. Mike's been one in one of these cars for 50 years, man, and today we delivered his dream car. I know that feeling. There's nothing quite like it, man, and I know they're gonna enjoy this car for years to come, and that's a feeling that I know and I love, and they are some happy people. That 100%. is a muscle car. Yes. 100%. That 100%. is a muscle car. Totally a muscle car. One you can drive every day. Every day. Comfort and style. Yes. And performance. You got it all. All of it.